fake chips. I almost did this on purpose. This is a package I received today from AliExpress. I've got a few other bits and pieces in the package, but this got me a little bit excited because recently I bought this thing. And this is a chip tester. Now it can test all different kinds of chips, but the ones that I'm really interested in are logic chips. Here's a stash of logic chips that I've got. There's some other, there's some Z80s down here as well, but most of these are logic chips. And most of these are 74 LS series logic chips, which are important for retro computers because Almost all of them were designed around the LS spec or the bipolar shot key type of spec. And these work to a very specific um, frequency. They work at very specific logic levels. I've got a little chart here. The oh, HC is the other one that we're concerned with, but let's come, let's concentrate on LS for um, for now. So the supply voltage is typically five volts only. So you're your regular uh, five volt supply is going to power this chip, but that doesn't make any difference to the levels that the chip drives the output or uh, receives the input. So the input threshold on uh, an LS chip is around about two volts. Uh, it's a little bit higher than that. Two to, to I think, um, in a ZX Spectrum, the ULA and the, and the processor expect around two to 2.2 .2 volts. I think it's around there. Uh, the speed is fast and the power consumption is high. This is an older technology. Uh, the output tri drive is strong. It's got a good sync current and the noise immu immunity is moderate. And is it compatible with TTL logic inputs? Yes. So the other type of chip, and I've got a few on here. There are a few HC chips here and hereabouts. There's one there, a 74 HCT chip. Uh, now, a HCT chip is compatible with CMOS logic, that 2.2 .2 to 2.2 volts. That will um, trigger a logic high in a, a HCT chip. Um, but HC chips, I don't know if I've got any on here, actually. Uh, I can't see any HCT chips on here. Oh, sorry, any H, there's another HCT there. Um, but most of these are LS because these are all vintage chips. Anyway, this um, this chip tester can tell the difference between LS and HCT. I can demonstrate this by popping a random chip in here from this uh, stash without even looking at it, pressing the enter button, and it's not found it. This might be a faulty one. Yep, I found a faulty one. All right, this is an LS. Zero zero. So LS zero zero. Now I found this listing on AliExpress, which purports to sell you fifty pieces of DIP fourteen Logic IC kit, uh, ranging from zero uh, HC zero zero, HC zero two, HC zero four, HC oh eight, HC thirty two, or LS. So you can choose HC or LS. So the um, the LS is the same series chips, so 00, 02, 04, 08 and 32s. I chose the LS and I can, I'm not going to show you the order, but I definitely ordered LS series chips. And these arrived. This is a, I'm just going to grab one, other. let's get them all out. Why not? I mean, they're probably going in the bin anyway. <laughs> Um, but they're not. They're, they'll be, I find a use for them at some point. But what worries me is that these are labelled. Let's find one that's not intertwined with its neighbour. These ones are labelled uh, 74LS32N. You can almost see underneath. Oh, I'm going to have to get the microscope out for this. So you can see here, this is one of the chips. And it says quite clearly there, 74 ls 32 N. But if you angle this, you can see that I can't get the reflection. That surface doesn't look very good to me. I think uh, this has been sanded and re-etched, possibly painted, but we'll find out that part of it in a second. The next thing I need to do <laughs> is pop this so-called LS32 chip in here and uh, see what it does. 
It's a HC32. But are they all like that? Yes. I'll just zero that between them so that it doesn't look like I'm not pressing it. HC32. HC32. All of these are HC32s. What about the other ones? The, the ones that I was really interested in were the um, O2s because I don't have this. Those are O4s. I don't have very many O2s. And in the Des Test Switch cartridge here that Matt Desmond created, the O2 in here, he had some problems with um, the some fake LSO2s. And, and the ROM checking routines were thrown off by using an LS uh, or HC02 instead. But I think he had some, some that were badged wrong. What are these ones? They're 08s. I've forgotten which ones I've opened now. They're 00s. Okay, these are the 02s. HC02. And I can tell you that all of these are exactly the same. But why is that a big problem? Well, going back to this handy list here. So uh, HC is uh, is not bipolar shot key, it's CMOS. And uh, the VCC supply, it can be anything from two to six volts. So it's gonna be five volts or just under five volts in a ZX Spectrum or a Commodore 64. And the input threshold, so the voltage it will read a uh, logic high uh, coming into the chip is 0.7 uh, of the VC or times the VCC high. So 70% of the VCC high. So at five volts, that's gonna be 3.5 volts. And when most TTL logic works at two volts or just around two volts, I mean, most of it is higher than that, but you can get edge cases and you can get um, temperature variations and things like this. So that's not going to trigger a logic high going in. Um, also, the um, the speed is similar. Uh, the power consumption is better. And the output drive is lower than LS and can vary. So it might not drive if there's fighting for, if there's a bus contention type situation, especially in a, in a ZX Spectrum, that can be a problem as well. So the noise immunity is actually better. But that's not going to help us here. Uh, these being very, very fake is a big problem. So let's have another look under the microscope. This one actually looks a bit better than that other one that I was looking at. But let's try, first of all, some isopropyl alcohol and a magic eraser sponge thing. Nothing's coming off. Now you can see that that is actually etched. That's been sanded and re-etched. Let's go back to one of those other ones. Let's try this uh, 32, because this one, yeah, this one looked a bit rough. So I'm gonna give that a squirt with some IPA. And there's something coming off of that one. It looks more dirty than anything, and it is etched. I bought this acetone <laughs> ages ago, and I've never used it. So here we go. I'm going to use a cotton bud this time. And I want to protect my workbench with some plastic. Plastic's not going to really stop acetone. No, there's nothing coming off of this. They have been fully sanded and re-etched. Okay. So 
what do I do? Well, the first thing I did was uh, contacted the, the AliExpress seller via their online chat thing and sent two photographs of this set tester with showing that they were HC chips and that they'd been rebadged, um, pointing out that they were fake. And within a minute, not within a day, a minute, literally less than 60 seconds, they refunded me. Which in some ways is good, but also makes me think they see this a lot. So these are, well, these, these were free, <laughs> but they are pretty useless to me. I've already rubbed off that one. Oh, well. Um, they are pretty useless, and I'll probably get more use out of the little boxes than the actual, um, than the chips themselves. Who knows? Um, I might find a use for them one day, but yeah. I didn't, I mean, I... I I could have found a use for some of them. I have plenty of logic spares from boards. It would have been nicer to have some that were not needing to be desoldered from boards so for repairs. But I do have a good stock. I haven't got very many, or I haven't got any LSO2s, I don't think. There might be one on here, but I think it's faulty. It would have been nice, and it would have been a little bit too good to be true for 50 chips to only cost five quid, less than five pounds. Uh, and I kind of expected them to be fake. But I was hoping that they would be HCT rather than HC. If they'd have been HCT, uh, I probably wouldn't have even have asked for a refund um, because they would have been fine. But it is what it is. I, I kind of just wanted to try out my new <laughs> chip testing thing here. But yeah, that's it really. I, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, before I go, I also got this. Uh, this is a PBT fiber cleaning polishing motherboard IC glue rim oval cleaning brush for circuit IC PCB BGA phone electric repairing. Do you think they're after the keywords there? And it's a super dense toothbrush. So I've been always been using this thing, which is... A toothbrush that I used years ago. But this quite oh, does actually feel like it will do the job. It's really, really dense. I think it will clog up, but it should be able to clean it as well. And it's nice and stiff. So actually, there's a little bit of flux residue on the back of this. Oh. Yeah, this is doing the job. that okay this one's for Sven <laughs> uh, who put me onto these uh, nano sponges which wouldn't be very good on something like this because it's going to end up getting ripped up into shreds but this no uh, this is working a treat oh yes I might buy some more of these they're not very expensive. I can't remember how much they were. You can find them all over the place. Okay, that's it. Goodbye. I'm going now.